At around 11.40 p.m. on the evening of April 14, 1912, the RMS Titanic struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean. Over the next few hours, the liner would be seen by survivors as going down by the head until she entirely disappeared from the ocean surface and made her way to the seafloor. In recent times, many people have started to make real-time animations of Titanic on YouTube, myself included. One of the more recent developments when it comes to these animations is accurately depicting the Titanic listing during its sinking. From a historical standpoint, we've known that the ship had a port list while it was sinking for over a century, but it wasn't until the last decade or so that we actually started to see that listing be depicted in a visual form. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to go over most of the main sources that I use for making animation videos and explain just what was making Titanic list over to port and to starboard. So the first indication of a list started when the collision occurred, and it actually happened on the starboard side. As the iceberg began to pass along the ship's hull, it opened up six compartments to the ocean. The incoming water began to affect the starboard side of the ship, and thus a starboard list was developed fairly quickly. We don't know exactly how far this list to starboard went, nor when the listing actually stopped. The last confirmed account from the ship's bridge came from Quartermaster Robert Hitchens on this matter, who stated that approximately five minutes after the iceberg collision, or around 11.45 p.m., Captain Smith could be seen entering the bridge and noting a five-degree list to starboard. He then rang down to the engine room via the bridge telegrams, and he ordered a final all-stop condition to the engines. So within the first five minutes, Titanic was suffering from at least a five-degree starboard list, maybe more. A quick look downstairs will show you why this starboard list happened. In one of the forward cargo holds, and located in the center of the ship, was a passageway for the firemen to get to their quarters in the bow to the boiler rooms as quickly as possible. This passageway acted as a sort of mini compartment. It effectively split the watertight compartment in two, at least partially. So the water, now being inside the ship, was partially confined to the starboard side and it began to pull there, resulting in that initial 5 degree starboard list. But what about after the water had reached the top of the passage? Surely it would also flood over to the port side and the ship would even itself back out. This did happen, but it didn't happen very quickly. It took over an hour actually for the ship to reduce this initial starboard list. The reason why it didn't happen quickly is because all of the water that had entered the ship had mainly pulled itself on the starboard side. So as the bow began to slip down lower, the ship still had a pretty noticeable starboard list. Up and out on deck, around an hour after the collision had occurred, the first lifeboats were beginning to be launched. A few survivor accounts from these boats noted that the boats weren't necessarily right up against the ship's side, but they were a little further out than what was to be expected. But likewise on the port side, the boats were right up against the ship's hull when they were lowered. At some times they even had to reach out and push themselves away from the ship's hull to avoid damaging the lifeboat as it was being lowered. This would seem to indicate that even an hour after the collision, Titanic still had a noticeable list to starboard, maybe not a full 5 degree list, but still a noticeable list. Passenger accounts in the lifeboats begin to state the opposite. You begin to have passenger accounts on the starboard side of the ship say that lifeboats were being pushed up against the ship's hull. Passengers on the port side begin to testify that there was a pretty big gap between the ship's hull and their lifeboats. At one such boat, on the port side, boat 10, passengers were being tossed over a two-foot gap into the lifeboat at around 1.30 to 1.50 a.m. 
This would indicate that something inside the ship had changed. Up until this point in the sinking, the ship had been slowly leveling itself out from that initial starboard degree list. But now, in the span of just 10 to 15 minutes, passengers are reporting on a new list. Up until this point, the water inside the ship had mainly just been filling up the forward damaged compartments. As they filled, the bow would sink lower beneath the surface, and the water would then make its way up staircases, ladders, and cargo hatches to a new deck. There, it would start pooling and flooding all over again. But now, at around the two-hour mark after the collision, the water had pooled itself on E-deck. This deck on the forward section of Titanic had two corridors for travel and access to other portions of the ship. One of them on the port side, and one of them on the starboard side. But an important point to note is that the starboard passage was not entirely opened to receiving water. There were portions of this corridor where there were walls and doors that would section the corridor off, causing the flooding water to look for somewhere else to pool. It found this on the port side. The port side corridor was affectionately called Scotland Road. This passage was not only wider than its counterpart on the starboard side, but it was completely open for nearly 60% of the entire ship's length. This one long unbroken corridor would allow incoming water a new place to pull. So as the water began to pull itself on the port side, the ship began to list to port. Up on deck, this was noticed by passengers in the last remaining lifeboats. This port list would continue to grow, surpassing the initial list to starboard by nearly double. Most modern analyses calculates that the ship was suffering from around a 9 to 10 degree port list during the final 40 minutes of the sinking. The final indicator for Titanic's list prior to her full breakup sequence happened during what I and others refer to as her final plunge. All of the survivor accounts we have here come from outside and on the ship itself. If anyone was still inside the ship at this point, it was sinking so quickly that they most certainly did not survive to give an account. So just prior to the plunge occurring, most of the passengers on deck were still continuing to say that the ship was suffering from a list to port. To point out one specific account, when Collapsible A was released from the roof of the officer's quarters on the boat deck, the crew had to push the lifeboat up the deck and around a funnel stay wire to get it into the lifeboat station. They never actually managed to accomplish this goal. The boat, after being pushed upwards, became jammed, and the ship sank from under their feet as they continued to ready the lifeboat. Other accounts during this period note that the ship took a sudden but noticeable plunge downwards, by some estimates as much as two or three feet. This action would send a wave rushing up the boat deck that engulfed nearby passengers. But then something strange happened. The ship rose back up out of the ocean by a slight amount before beginning the plunge again. During this dip and then slight resurfacing, there are several accounts of those on board the ship that say that she evened herself out at this time, meaning that she eliminated or nearly eliminated her port list. We don't know what the internal dynamics of the sinking were at this point in time. We have computer analyses and simulations that show rapid flooding in Boiler Room 3 and other areas of the decking inside, but nothing to indicate what would cause this sudden dip down and nearly full elimination of a 10 degree port list. For now, we have nothing to do but wait until more research is done on the subject. One theory for this movement is that a bulkhead inside the ship failed and that led to the sudden down and then back up again jerking motion. Thank you all for watching. 
Again, massive thanks to my YouTube channel members for their continuous support. If you would like to become a channel member, click the blue join button next to the subscribe button and you'll be able to select your tier and your perk rewards. Until then, take care and have a great day.